Portrait of an Old Woman A departure from his typical Filipina maiden in Marsala depicts in oil and enduringly harness portrait of an unnamed old woman and in doing so beautifully captures an entire life story within the confines of his canvas, snow white hair and a weathered compassion tell of a life spent at work. Brown skin attesting to art spent under the sun, the padded amulet attesting to a native credulity that guided the subject through the years. A more solo antithesis the audience to uncover more and gaze upon his subject to learn and understand from her and through his use of enigmatic lightning. Listen to her adult story, Amor Solo not only created youthful beauty through his unconsistent mastery of an oil medium, but his works also created a different form of alien, one that was more sentimental and heartfelt, and in doing so, he was able to draw out of quintessential value of all his subjects. Are the other painting Fernando Amor Solo, along the mountain trail, a basket of mangoes, oil canvas on 1949. Washing seeds. Washing the carbon. Under the arbor. And water carrier. Juan Luna. A native of Adok, Ilocos Norte, was born on October 23, 1857. To Don Joaquin Luna de San Pedro y Paredes and Doña Lorena Novicio. His interest in art was due to the influence of his brother Manuel, who was also a painter teacher. Loren Lorenzo Guerrero and also enrolled at Academia de Dibioy Pintura under the Spaniard artist Agustin Saez. Juan Luna is considered as one of the greatest Filipino artists in the history, with masterpieces such as the Spolarium, the Death of Cleopatra, and the Blood Compact. He is mostly known for the Romanticism and Realism style of art. Some works of Juan Luna's painting first is Spolarium in 1884. The Spolarium is a painting by Filipino painter Juan Luna. Luna working on canvas span of eight months completing the painting which depicts dying gladiators. The painting was submitted by Luna to the Exposition National de Velas Artists in 1884 in Madrid, where it garnered the first gold medal. The picture recreates a despoiling scene in Roman circles where dead gladiators are stripped of weapons and garments together with other works of the Spanish Academy. The Spolarium was on exhibit in Rome in April 1884. The second work of Juan Luna's painting is the Parisian Life, 1890. The Parisian Life, also known as Interior Dion Cafe, literally meaning inside the cafe, is an 1892 oil canvas Impressionist painting by Filipino painter and a revolutionary activist Juan Luna. It portrayed a scene inside a cafe in Paris with a woman identified as a prostitute representing fallen womanhood who was about to rise from a sofa. The Parisian life is one of the masterpieces that Luna created when he stayed in Paris, France from October 1884 to February 1893. His own personal Parisian life was a total of 8 years. This very youth in Luna's career in painting is known as the post-academic and the Parisian period, a time when his style moved away from having dark, dark colors of the academic palette. The third one is the La Kenya in 1895. La Bolokenia, literally the woman from Bulacan or the Bulacan woman, also sometimes referred to as Luna Bolokenia, is a Spanish title of an 1895 painting by Juan Luna. The woman in the portrait could be one of the women courted by Luna when he lost his wife. Luna killed his wife out of jealousy. Bulacan is a province in the Philippines.
Philippines in Luzon Islands. It, its residents called Bulacan News and also spelled as Bulacan News in the Filipino language. She ran portrait of a Filipino woman wearing a Maria Clara gown, a traditional Filipino dress that is composed of four pieces, namely the camisa, the saya, or the long skirt, the ponuelo, or the neck cover, and the tapis, knee length of her skirt. The woman's clothing in the painting is the reason why the masterpiece alternately referred to as Maria Clara. It is one of the most few canvases done by Luna illustrating the Filipino cultures. The fourth one is Governor Ramon Blanco in 1880s. Ramon Blanco Arenas Rira Y. Polo is the first Marquess of Peña Plata. In September 15, 1833 to April 4, 1906, he was a Spanish brigadier and colonial administrator. For instance, Sebastian, he was sent to the Caribbean in 1858 and governed Cuba and Santo Domingo. In 1861, he returned to Spain but was then sent to the Philippines. Afterwards, he returned to Spain and served in the Third Carles War, where he attained the rank of brigadier. He served as Captain General of the Barry after taking a part in the 1876 offensive in the Valley of Bastan. He acquired his mayor, his mar marquesette during this time. He was sent to, to Cuba as Captain General in April. April 1879 and was involved in the Little War. The fifth work of one's Luna painting is Souvenir Day 1899. Souvenir Day 1899 is a title as Bandera Filipina. This was painted by Juan Luna using a watercolor on paper. It was completed by Luna on May 12, 1899 in Let's Mirage, Bohemia. After his meeting with Rizal's friend, Dr. Ferdinand Dometrit. This is the first known artistic illustration of the Philippine flag. This was also the last known artwork by Luna before he died. This painting was created as a souvenir for Dr. Jose Rizal's friend to show how the Philippines are free now of Rizal heroism. Luna wants to portray the time that the flag of the Philippines was officially opened and displayed during the Philippine Independence Day on 1898. Odalist 1885 The Odalist is a famous 1885 painting by award-winning Filipino painter and revolutionary activist Juan Luna. It is one of Luna's so-called academic salon portraits that follow the standards of proper proportion and perspective, a realistic depiction with an air of dignity and allure. The odalist is typical of the well-planned characteristic of the artist's portraits, meaning it was painted in a personal studio while expertly studying the desired effects and with finish. The odalist is one of the paintings that made Luna as an officially accepted artist at the Salon of Paris because it shows Luna's skill at workmanship. His talent to draw and to draw well. Insinuous the Amour 1890. Insinuous the Amour literally daydreams of love is a dream of oil on painting by Filipino painter and revolutionary activist Juan Luna. It depicts Luna's wife, Maria de la Paz, Prado de Tabera, while sound asleep. The predominant color used by Luna for Ingenious de Amor is white paint dashes of pink, green, and blue hue. Luna used rapid brush strokes to express the dreamy mood. The idealism of this painting must a darker fact in real life for although was fond of his wife. He was unfortunately also prone to fits of violent jealous. On September 23, 1882, after her accusing her adultery, he killed his wife and mother-in-law, as well as seriously wounding his brother-in-law. Lona was charged with murder but was acquitted shortly. Thereafter, he is then judged as a crime of passion. Impacto de Sangre, the Blood Compact in the Impacto de Sangre, the Blood Compact in the
1565 sa Dugo, Blood Compact Ritual, between Dato, Sikatuna, Obohol, and Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, surrounded by other conquistadors. Dato Sikatuna was described to be being crowded out of the picture by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi and his fellow conquistador. Juan Luna completed the Blood Compact in 1886, a year he moved to Paris to open his studio. In 1904, the painting won the first prize in Paris, France and the same previous exposition in the United States. It is one of the three paintings Luna gave the government of Spain. The other paintings are Don Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, a painting that was born during the Philippine-Spanish War and Governor Ramon Blanco, a work that became a part of the Lopez Museum collection. This is one of the last paintings created by Luna. Damas Romanas 1882 Las Damas Romanas literally the Roman Dames, also known as the Roman Ladies. The Roman Women or the Roman Ladies is an old canvas painting by Juan Luna, one of the most important Filipino painters of the Spanish period in the Philippines. It is one of the early works of Luna that resurfaced in the past quarter of a century after being presumed to be either lost or missing. It was painted by Luna when he was a student in the School of Painting in the Real Academia de Bellas Artes de San Fernando in Madrid, Spain in 1877. Alejo Valera, a Spanish painting picture. Don Luna as a Luna created Las Damas Romanas in 1882. The Battle of Lepanto. The Battle of Lepanto. In Spanish, La Batala de Lepanto is a painting by Filipino painter and revolutionary activist Juan Luna. Along with Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, Luna is one of the first Filipino to excel and earn recognition in the international fields of arts and culture. Painted by Luna in 1887. The masterpiece is about the battle of the Panto of October 7, 1551. The painting pictures Don Juan of Austria, also known as Don John of Austria, in battle while at the bow of ship. Portrait of Rizal Oil painting Portrait of Jose Rizal painted in Paris by Filipino painter and hero Juan Luna, date circa 1890s. Jose Rizal was a Filipino nationalist and polymath during the tail end of the Spanish colonial period of the Philippines. He is tagged as the national hero of the Philippines. Isopo, the Luna painting, entitled Isopo in the Empress Velasquez, was among those acquired by a Swiss collector from a gallery in Zurich in 1960s. Tampuhan Tampuhan meaning Sulking is an 1895 classic oil on canvas impressionist painting by Filipino painter and hero Juan Luna. It is a depiction of two persons in a living room of a house. The two people are Filipino lovers, Sulking or experiencing Tampo. Because of an argument or a misunderstanding, the man is looking out on the street from the balcony. The woman, on the other hand, is focusing her eyes on the floor. According to Rosalinda Orosa, the owner of the painting, the man is Ariston Bautista Lin, a friend of Luna who studied medicine in Europe. Then she said that the woman is Emilia Trinidad, the ancestor of the owner of the painting. Espana y Filipinas 1886 Espana y Filipinas meaning Spain and the Philippines. In translation, is an 1886 oil on the wood by Filipino painter, illustrado, and revolutionary activist Juan Luna. It is an allegorical depiction of two women together, one a representation of Spain and the other of the Philippines. The painting also
also known as Espana Guiando, a Filipinas, or Spain leading the Philippines, is regarded as one of the interim pieces of legacy that the Filipinos inherited from Luna. The painting is a centerpiece art at the Luna Hall of the Lopez Memorial Museum. La Muerte de Cleopatra La Muerte de Cleopatra, or the Death of Cleopatra, was awarded silver medal by Exposition Nacional de Belas Artes, or National Exposition of Fine Arts, in Madrid in 1881. Famous Filipino artist Juan Luna was first noticed in Spain because of his work La Muerte de Cleopatra, or the Death of Cleopatra, competition entry number 379 in the Exposition of Fine Arts in Madrid that opened on 18 May 1881. NL Balcon 1884 The subject, a box at the opera, possibly in Madrid. The La Madrileña or NL Balcon, literally the women from Madrid at the balcony. Sometimes simply referred to as La Madrillena is a painting by award-winning Filipino painter and revolutionary activist Juan Luna. It depicts a woman holding an umbrella known as the Parasol. Puesta del Sol 1880s Puesta del Sol or Sunset is a scene presumably somewhere in the north coast of France which Luna often visited. It presaged the landscapes that Luna was later to paint in Manila with its simple composition and brownish and octer tones. La Marquesa de Monte Olivar, 1881. The young Marchioness of Monte Olivar posed for his portrait in 1881. From the early period of Luna, the brush strokes on the face are smooth and have been meticulously applied, but the lace shawl over the dark dress is painted in quick, impressionist stick stoke, typical of the forceful style of the later Luna.